Big thank you to Squarespace for making today's video possible. Head over to squarespace.com backslash the DIY designer and use promo code the DIY designer for 10% off your future website. Let's do it. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Beyonce. Welcome to the DIY designer. Ugh, you're here on a very stressful day. First of all, if you've never been to the channel, my name's Orly Shani. Welcome. I hope that you like what you see. This is a big video for me because I'm so <laughs> intimidated. Did you guys see Beyonce at the Lion King premiere? God, she looked incredible. I was like literally like jaw on the floor when I saw the photos. I just started like a creep, like zooming in as much as I could. She wore this Alexandra McQueen gown and it's basically a tuxedo with this really beautiful tulle skirt attached to it. So it's all one beautiful piece. They even made a little mini version for Blue Ivy, which is just, oh, I can't. All of the crushes are happening. So I wanted to make it. I went downtown to see if I could even find what I needed because in order to make this work, it's really gonna all come down to the materials. So originally I was planning planning on buying each individual piece and hand sewing them. And Benjamin, well, you all know how smart he is. He suggested using the full panel pieces, which you can see like are on all of these dress forms here. They're like, it's basically like a full dress. And so I'm gonna cut them up and use it yeah. Now I needed some tool uh, to make the skirt. So I found that super inexpensive, a dollar a yard. And then I needed a blazer. I went to the thrift store, could not believe my luck, found this bad boy and it was $7. $7. The whole blazer with the tulle skirt attached has been a really, really big trend. There's all these gorgeous like pastel versions, white versions. So even if you're not gonna do the encrusted version and you just wanna learn how to attach the tulle skirt, I'm gonna show you how to do it so that it can be attached when you wanna wear it and it can be removed when you just want your blazer on its own. Oh my God, materials. So the first thing I did was put on a pair of heels similar to what I thought I would wear so I could set my dress form to the right height. This was gonna allow me to figure out exactly how long I needed my tool to be. If you don't have a, a dress form, don't worry about it. Just grab a dress that is the right length on you, put your blazer on top of it, and just measure how far your skirt extends beyond that. For me, it was 35 inches, so I am just cutting all of my tool pieces to 35 inches. Now, take each one of those pieces and lay them on top of some freezer paper. Grab your glitter nail polish and you wanna do droplets. You don't wanna brush it on, you wanna like drop it on so that it stays in this little bubble form and it's gonna give you a beautiful pop of the glitter and it'll sparkle very much like her crystals, but without the cost of all of those crystals. Let it dry on the freezer paper and then pull it off and it will stay in its individual form. Form. If you don't use the freezer paper, it's gonna kind of spread on out, spread out on you. Now I'm just sewing each one of my 35 inch pieces together so that I end up with a really, really long skirt. Next, pull out a good amount of thread from your sewing machine, set your machine to a basting stitch, and you're going to sew all across the top of that skirt. Now, when you pull on the thread, it will gather the skirt up for you. Super simple. So this is something I did earlier. I grabbed a piece of black ribbon and I ran it across the bottom of my blazer, measuring it so it was the identical width of my blazer. Now I take that skirt that I had gathered up, I pin both ends of it and then evenly distribute all of the pleats to the center of it so that I know exactly how wide it needs to be to fit into my blazer exactly. Now you just pin it all into place and sew the tool to the ribbon. And then once you've got this piece done, you can attach this to the blazer however you want. Hand sew it, double stick tape, Velcro so it's removable, however you wanna do that. Now this is something else that I did that's optional, but I'm really glad I did it. I added a hidden zipper on the inside because when I wear it as a dress, I don't want it to open on me, but I want it to be hidden so I can also wear it as a jacket. That seam right there will be hidden by our crystal, so don't worry about it. Now it's time to start adding our crystal. This is very exciting. So I know that I need to cut out that piece in the center and also cut it down the center so it's two separate pieces, but I can't cut it directly down the center because my blazer overlaps more on the right than the left. So those couple of pieces right there, I'm gonna give them to the right hand side so when it's on my body, it'll look even. Grab your fabric scissors and just start cutting. You wanna cut as close to the edge of the crystal as possible so you see as little of the mesh as you can. And then again, just run your scissors, giving those individual pieces to whichever side of your blazer overlaps. Now, just trim off all the excess mesh so that it's nice, like one nice clean panel. 
Now I'm gonna start pinning it to my dress form and really deciding on the placement. This is sort of the design process. I pinned one side and then you just wanna make sure the other side matches. I also wanna make sure that my lapel is free to move as a lapel. So I'm going to cut away the crystal all down this center so that lapel is free. So grab your fabric scissors and start cutting again as close to that mesh as possible, keeping your left hand or whichever one is your non-dominant hand underneath so you can feel for the lapel, ensuring you're not cutting through the lapel. That's super important to guide yourself with your other hand. And now you can see it's free to go. So this other piece, now that they're detached, I can adjust it, move it, put it anywhere that I want. I realized it was much more flattering to kind of move it up, have it hang off the shoulder a little bit, and it creates a much more flattering shape on the body. So I'm just pinning everything into place, and then you wanna make sure that once the right side is done, you match it on the left side. So I cut the lapel off, I measured from the underarm to a key point on the panel, and then measured the other side to the same key point on the panel to make sure they were even. Now I'm just cutting off the bottom so that obviously it ends where the blazer ends, but don't throw these pieces away. Save them because each one of these pieces can act as like a little applique to fill in any gaps. For example, I decided to cut the button off because it was sort of in a weird spot and getting in the way. I knew I was gonna put a hidden snap closure on the inside, so I just covered up the buttonhole and where the button originally was with those extra pieces. I also do that on the shoulders. You can see there's two shoulder pieces that's gonna have some fringe hanging down the sleeves. I'm not gonna crystallize all of my sleeves because I think it's gonna be a little uncomfortable. So the fringe will do a lot. I'm adding some gem tack. This is not how I'm doing it. It's not being held down entirely by gem tack, but that is keeping it flat and easy while I hand sew. Because what I recommend doing is really only hand sewing the border. So you're gonna go all the way around, like outlining each one of those crystal pieces so that they're tacked down with a needle and thread. But the center of it is being held nice and flat with a little bit of that glue. Just do multiple multiple stitches and keep working your way around. And I had an idea. I thought if I could paint the white mesh black, it would actually make it look like each one of those pieces was individually sewn onto the blazer. It would, wouldn't give away the fact that it was one big piece. And you can see there the difference of when it was painted versus when it wasn't was night and day. When you can actually see the mesh, it's just a dead giveaway. So taking the time to paint it is really, I highly recommend it. Now guys, just kind of hand sew whenever you have time. Keep it on your dress form, hand sew 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Again, you're doing multiple stitches. So in, out, in, out, pull that thread and just keep working your way up all along the border. Now, here is my back piece. This was one extra panel I got for a great price. So I cut it in half pinned the bottom half on to my jacket, pinned it into place, added a little bit of the gem tack just to the back of those key spots, making sure not to get it where the mesh is because you will see it. And then I just painted everything black so that it looked like it was individually sewn. Oh my gosh. I'm like staring at it in the distance and it's so sparkly and so pretty. I'm super stoked. I wanna to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, for making today's video possible. If you have a product or service that you've been wanting to sell, Squarespace is the place to go to build a website that lets you do that. Not only do they have powerful analytics and marketing tools to help you promote that website, but they have beautiful design templates that will allow you to find one that's perfectly suited to your brand. Just browse through the design templates, pick one that's right for you, and start filling that website with all of your beautiful products. Product. Head to squarespace.com backslash the DIY designer and use promo code the DIY designer for 10% off your website. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong. You won't believe we've had our great, but somewhere there's a light inside of us. It shows the way. Not looking for no, oh no. Sugar coated love